Hi, guys, and welcome. This is Jen Gata Siciliano, artist, memoir writer, bipolar psychiatric survivor, and your host of Not As Crazy As You Think podcast, the place that offers an alternative perspective on mental illness, highlighting creativity, non-conventional healing, and breaking on through to the other side. If you are ready for a new narrative on the mental realm that celebrates crazy and cool without penalty, then Not As Crazy As You Think is for you. Hello, this is Jen Gata Siciliano, your host of Not As Crazy As You Think podcast. Thank you for joining us once again. Today, we have a wonderful guest with us. Her name is Cinda Bakar, and she is one of the show's fans. And it's a wonderful thing how we ended up connecting to each other. So this little story I'd like to share, um, and I want, you know, Cinda to, to introduce herself so to tell us a little bit about your background, where you're from, and and how you discovered the podcast and, and me. <laughs> <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm from Tunisia and in North Africa. Wow. Yes, it, it's a country uh, near Algeria and Morocco, so we are Arabs, uh, and we are very close to Italy as well, so very close to Europe. What you experienced there was a westernized upbringing. Yes. Yeah, sure. And But we have also the orient, oriental parts very strong uh, in our country. And that's what I love most about it because it's a mix between both. You know, it's very modern, uh, and but also it's like full of history and uh, it's beautiful, like beautiful yeah. landscape everywhere. So it's, uh, yeah, for me, it's a very beautiful and interesting country, yeah. It's beautiful. So you decided to, I mean, you've been traveling a lot, but you decided recently to come on over to New York. And that's how we kind of connected finally in person. So um, what did you think about New York when you visited? (laughs) It's like we say the love at first sight. (laughs) This is what I think about New York. Yes. Oh, that's so good. (laughs) <laughs> Cinda uh, came to my art show in Bushwick, Brooklyn. I'm thrilled because <laughs> it's always so great to have people support for that because, you know, nobody cares about the artists. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not so much. They, you know, they want to see it once in a while, the art, but, you know. So you, one of the things I found was interesting that you discovered my website and you found me online because you put into the words in the Google search bipolar and shaman or bipolarity and shamanism. So yeah. obviously these are interests of yours and one of the reasons why you reached out to me. So what does this mean to you? What do these words mean to you? Oof. So yeah, this is a hell of a topic, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. So when I was in Tunisia and when I reached out to you, uh, I was really in a, in a, let's say, dark space. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we will talk about it, I guess, uh, throughout this interview. But I believe in this period I was depressed or, um, but again, I don't, we talked about, I don't like the levels, right? But, But I mean, I was exploring so many things also into the art scene and, um getting back to Tunisia vibes and Tunisia lifestyle now because I was living uh, uh, on uh, in Thailand uh, mm-hmm. for eight months and uh, on this island uh, Kopangan. What were you doing <laughs> for, there for six months? I was just traveling and COVID happened <laughs> and I decided exactly and I decided to stay on Kopangan oh, for six months. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And I was working from there online, but also the life there is so um, different. Uh, the lifestyle is so different. So it's very affordable, right, to, to live. So it's completely different from the United States. Wow. Yeah. Is that where you were struggling with feelings of depression or? No, in Copangan, I was uh, feeling fine. But when I w- decided to go back to Tunisia, it was in September. I went to Bangkok and in Bangkok, I started feeling, uh, I had this heat, like a heat of, um, a lot of things happens, fears. And I think traumas w- awakened in me in that period uh, because knowing that I will go back to Tunisia and that I will have to adjust and to adapt there. And but it comes also with this belief system that I, uh, that I need to be successful all the time and I need to be, you know, always um, 
I don't know. I, I was very hesitant to go back to Tunisia back then. Yes. Mm. So the fear started from there, um, but it was uncontrolled. Like, I mean, it was very strong. So finally I decided to go back to Tunisia. Mm. Um, but it's, it's very, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a story, right? It's a, a from September. So it's been one year now from September to now from Bangkok to, to mm. now Washington DC, like many things, uh, many things happened. But I was in Tunisia back then and and I was not really feeling well, but I was exploring so many things. I did Reiki, the second degree of Reiki. I tried uh, psilocybin uh, for the second time. And like I did so many things in the well-being for myself, you know, right? Uh, I started breath work, a training in breath work. So now, so now I would be a facil uh, facilitator because this is like a medicine. This helped me. I need to breathe now to remember. I get so excited talking about this story. It's so <laughs> great. It's so great because, yeah. you know, you are an example of what I'm always trying to say, which is there are alternatives Exactly, 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 exactly. Yeah. I know this this topic is so important for you and for me as well, right? And for mm -hmm. so many people. Um, and when I was in Tunisia, so I went, of course, to, to see professionals, right? Sure. I was not, because I was feeling bad and I'm so aware, I'm a biologist and uh, I, I'm educated, you know, I study a lot. I was in the personal development field for five years you know like i was right. trained in netherlands like i'm really aware and self-conscious but i was feeling so bad and no one could understand me no one right. no one no one no one like i couldn't reach out to fr some friends only some few friends uh was supportive but otherwise like it was so difficult to interact with others yeah so i seeked help and and the good thing about it, i started a therapy uh, which uh, lasted one month and a half, I think two months. It was all right. It was okay. Uh, it was like kind of behavior therapy, but mm -hmm. I had to write a lot about my fears and I don't know, my doubts and my past. And I was, I wasn't, I know I don't like this. <laughs> I don't want to get back in the past. Like it's why, you know, like I, I want to, I'm not this person. I'm, I'm talking about love, you know, like I write, about love i write poetry about love i don't want to be writing about my fears but right. it was but it was helpful in a certain way mm -hmm. okay? and i had a beautiful text i think because of this therapy uh and then it was not enough so i said no i need to see a psychiatrist mm. this is this is like i can feel it in my body you know this is also physical it's i don't want to de describe it like um the state of it but um it just when someone realized that when I realized that I'm unwell, okay, yeah. I'm unwell. I, mm -hmm. I went to see the right, uh, well, who I get, guess the right choice for me, even if I'm not into the uh, pharmaceutical uh, industry and I don't want to, and I'm sure I don't want to be prescribed anything. So I'm far from this. I'm mm -hmm. more into Reiki and, and, and healing um, and other type of therapies. But I said, okay, let me check. <laughs> right you're trying to give everything the chance yeah, yeah, to work yeah, yeah. right exactly so let me check and i and my sister helped me to find a psychiatrist a woman that i i'm really grateful that i i, I went to this woman in particular because she was um very uh present very very present she was pregnant back then and she was very present to me and listening to me and make me feel that it's all right mm. <laughs> you know like you don't have a, it's all right. You know, right. like we are just having a conversation and just share with me. And I was so open to her and I asked her, please, if I need to seek advanced <laughs> help or, or if it's something that is serious, let, let's talk about it like, uh, directly and tell me, am, am I bipolar? Am I schizophrenic? Like I asked her about many right. things and she said, no. And if you want to believe in this, you will have a lot of symptoms. <laughs> If you will start really? speaking like this, you will symptomatize this. I think that's incredible. It is. She's so smart. She was in a position to help people who were unwell, say, but she didn't yeah. subscribe necessarily to the no. philosophy. No. Psychiatry. Wow. No, no. no. And Lucky she you. was asking. Because she, I was telling her that I do this healing practices, that I, I did the first degree in Reiki, that I'm... I do yoga. I organize yoga events. 
yeah. I'm an event organizer. I organize yoga and meditation events. I'm in this. Wow. I, I'm not. It's not something new for me, you know. Right. I, I study science. Like I'm, I'm, I'm very aware of mental health, and but this is something that is very strong for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And she and she was saying, oh, maybe you can do another, uh, do more of Reiki or do your second degree. Really? Maybe you can, maybe you can explore this, um, like study uh, kinesiology because I was telling her that those things are I'm interested in, right? Because I tried right. also over, because I had in my life uh, many phases of depressions and um I call it depression, but phases where I feel low, you know, so I seek yeah. help every time. And I tried so many therapies. Right. You know, but all more always uh, about the emotions and about uh, the well being, not the illness. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Not right. focus on, 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 on the source, on the disease, more focus on the well being part of it and healing. Exactly. Um, in holistic way. Right. Well, yeah. that's why I'm surprised that like, you're really lucky, like your psychiatrist was really like, it, to me, it beyond, you know, what the current view of how mental illness and mental wellness is right now, especially in America. I know that this westernized approach in seeing everything as an illness, yeah. physical illness, you know, that's in your yeah, brain, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's. It's so um, now worldwide, but I yeah, think yeah, that yeah. there's a lot of emphasis on that here in America because of big pharma and yeah. they just are always pushing drugs. So they're just giving them to everybody in America who you could be as you could be as young as three years old and you are eligible for medication uh, for your brain. Yeah, I, 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 this, I, I cannot conceive it. And especially for kids, you know, like. Yeah, wait, it's like a human wait rights. Wait and see. They're not exactly. They're, they're not dangerous, right? For yeah, they're not dangerous, but you can't get kids, off them. You know? It's so <laughs> hard to get off them. I mean, you have to see what I'm trying to do now to get off these things. Yeah, Twenty-seven yeah, years I, later. I know, but this happened also to me in Tunisia, and right. I told you I think this story about it. Like I went to see uh, um, how how we call this, like a family doctor, right? Like a generalist, yeah. Yeah. someone very basic, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so normally he will um, recommend me to, to someone, to a specialist, right? When I, I went, I think I was 25 years old back then. Mm. I'm, like, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but I was unwell and I went to see this uh, generalist, okay, doctor. Mm -hmm. Five, 10 minutes, only 10, 10 minutes, you know, in the neighborhood, like he's the, you know, the, the doctor of the neighborhood. Yeah. In 10 minutes he said, oh. And he was telling like scientist uh, things, you know, and I'm a biologist and I just finished my schooling, you know, but I was oh so gosh. low. I was so, uh, I needed help. Right. right. But in and, and, and 10 minutes, he gave me a strong medication, a strong medication like Xanax and Seroplex. Maybe no. people can, 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 can look for this, you know, and, and he, what he said, listen to this, what he said, oh, you can get back to sport because I told him that I, I'm a tennis player. I was a tennis player from eight to eighteen. My body is used to tennis, right. like my whole um, whole um, uh, hormones. You know, hormone system is 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 based on this level of um, activity, right? And I right. stopped. And I was focusing on study, and I, I thought I gave him some insights. You know, to know. Right. I gave him some insights on me, like someone who is coming. And well, I, I keep selling this word, telling this word, but I want people to understand also what we are talking about. Um, it's when you cannot take decisions for yourself. You feel mm -hmm. so sad, so mad, so dark, you know, like you feel this is dark. You cannot take your own. Like, I mean, so, so for so, some people, and it happens to me also, like I don't want to eat. Right. I, I don't eat anymore or, or I will be, I will smoke more cigarettes. I will smoke a lot of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. I will get back to my addictions very strongly, you know? Right. Like, right. It's like, I feel now I can explain it to people like this. My traumas are activated, mm. you know, like it's, it's because it's, it's energy. It's not only, you know, it's love it. Even the, even the thinking, the thinking here in when, what we see in the mind, you know, like what we perceive or feel, um, 
it's from the mind. It's also energy happening. Right. It's so many levels of this, you know, that we can talk about. But um, but he cannot without imagery, without any machine, without anything, you know. Right. Like what right. intuition is not. Don't tell me it's intuition. You right. don't pre- prescribe this strong, strong medication right. that you know that can that can addict, that right. can be become addictive. Yeah. You know, to someone after ten minutes, this is not possible. No. And and I tried them for one week. What he say, you you can take them for, uh, for a few months, four months, maybe six months, and then we reduce. You know, and and I was thinking by myself, I was feeling so stupid when I start taking them. I yes. couldn't focus anymore. No, I can't focus on you I can't focus on you anymore. No. I, I remember myself very clearly. Very clearly, I see myself in my car. I was working back then. As a pharmaceutical representative, but it was cosmetics. It's like, it was just like cosmetics, lightning products. So I go to doctors uh, to tell them about to prescribe. So this, it's not medication. It's like just cosmetics. But mm-hmm. I was in, in the industry, and I remember I'm in the car in front of a of a building. My boss called me. <laughs> he, we talk. Okay, we have a conversation, and uh-huh. I feel so low, right? Yeah. And and um, we have a conversation, and then I hang up. After like just after I hang up, I for- the already forgot. Wow. Everything, like, but I feel this much of confusion, you know. Right. And I and this is because of the medication. I right. was not like this before this. Exactly. I was down. I was low. I was uh, sad. I was I don't know what's happening, but I was not not focus and you know what I mean. Right. So I right I because it affects time. your cognition. Exactly. It may control a feeling because exactly. they're, they're figuring out, you know, <laughs> oh, well, these uh, chemicals cause, you know, the raising of serotonin, whatever all this stuff is. Yeah. yeah and yeah. it's like, that's not what you, your brain is supposed to allow these things no, to. Oh, no, it's not natural. No, like, it's not. I, I'm not a doctor. And um, I, uh, I studied five years and a half biology and molecular biology. So I have an understanding. Okay. Nice. When he tell me that he's giving me an inhibitor of a, a receptor of serotonin, right? So I have more serotonin in my system. Mm-hmm. He's inhibiting my natural, <laughs> you know, right. you know, those things that attach the molecule of serotonin. After seven days, I remember very much when when I take the pill after fifth. Th- this one is Seroplex because it was fasting month for us. It was Ramadan. I'm, I'm not sure I was fasting or not, but like we, we have this change of system, like how we eat and everything. Mm-hmm. So I remember I take this pill when we eat the uh, in, in sunset during sunset, right? When we eat the the first time. Mm-hmm. After f- fifteen minutes, maybe thirty minutes, I feel all awake. I feel alive, you know, I feel awake, I feel I'm happy. I go out with my friends and have coffee and I feel like, oh, I'm back. I'm social again. I'm oh, I'm happy again, nice. you know. <laughs> I think I feel I feel it different, you know. Yeah. But then, but then when I go back to sleep and I have to take the second pill, Xanax, I feel my whole body shaking. Right. And I sleep right. like boom right away, you know. This is not natural. No, it's not natural. But don't tell me this this is good for me. I don't I'm not a doctor and I'm not talking about every psychiatric psychiatric and mental illnesses because i don't know Mm -hmm. you know but i'm talking about my case i'm I'm just talking about myself and i also recognize other people right like it's not it's not normal in tunisia still till now after i don't want to say who is this person because it's not i don't want to go there it's not my problem right but but till now i know that the same person prescribed in the same way yes Another person went to him like few really? months ago and he gave the same thing after I don't know how many years, you know. You know what so, hurts to me because these people, I know that they're trying to help. Everyone's like, oh, why are you yeah, going to yeah, a psychiatrist? Yeah. I'm like, you know what? It's not the people. It's that they are brainwashed also because yeah. they are thinking that they're doing the right thing by, oh, I'm giving you this medicine. It's not medicine. I mean, when we talk about plant medicine, that's yeah. medicine. This is like these chemicals that you're just putting in the brain to control things. And it's like, yeah. it's, there's nothing more controlling than these substances. 
And then what? You're dependent on the system for the rest of your life. That's what happened to me. Yeah, so yeah. I'm just so thankful for you <sighs> that they didn't label you and that they didn't medicate you beyond the seven days that you did because you saw right away that this doesn't make sense. Uh, That's a biology. Yeah, but th- yeah, but this it was like I told you ten years ago, and now it was ten years ago the first the the first and last time I took this kind of medication, and it was seven days, and I throw them. I like I throw them like this. I said, "Oh, this is not," and I'm gonna I'm not gonna see anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> At that point, I'm not gonna see anyone else, and right. I start and I start just uh, doing hypnosis, like you know, the, the, the meditation that I found I find it on YouTube. This is how it started for me. The nice. whole, the way a holistic, you know, and and spiritual experience also, I guess, for me. Um, and and I started uh, just being in the garden under the sun, and I let go. I yeah. just, I, I, this is the feeling. I just let go and I said, okay, this is beyond me. And I don't know anyone now who can help me. So I just talk to God or to the universe, you know, yeah. the way it's, it's, you feel it. Uh, I, I felt it and I said, just help me out. Uh, and I start receiving signs and receiving uh, guidance. And, and then I, I start following my life, you know, and my path. Isn't that wonderful? It, it is wonderful. And so it looks like like getting through the dark night of the soul. That's what I said. Might yeah. have benefits on the other side if people weren't so afraid of it. Exactly. But that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. If, if you are not able to face your darkness, yeah, it's not even to face it, to just to recognize it, you know, to see it. And and it, it, it sometimes it hurts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, yeah. but it's also part of a of a of a life it's part yeah. of a game and 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 to and it hurts because it's for us to to stop and to listen to say okay why does it hurt right why am i and where right you don't tell me that i'm gonna take a medicine and that i'm gonna be fine right. <laughs> if it's here it means that there There's is a reason, reason why right. There is you know, a reason beyond the biological exact construct. Let's forget about it, but, but because we are not just cells and yes. we are also energy and this we forget about. The energy work, I think, is really interesting. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you had mentioned that sometimes you do feel drained, uh, exactly. say, if you took on, you know, other people listening to other people's problems or anything like that. So protecting your energy is important. And, you know, you consider yourself like a spiritual healer, an intuitive coach. How do you protect your energy now, having learned what you did? You know, Mm -hmm. how, what advice can you give others for that? Oh, you know, and that has to do with Reiki too, right? I mean, that's all energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Listen, I'm so lucky that I found uh, a Reiki on my path. Because I, I I strongly believe in it, and and even if even if I just do this on myself and believe that it's it's helping me, it's healing my energy, I will do it with a, with someone initiating me, or just if I I, I hear about it, like the something is like if I put my intention on myself to do good for myself, right. this is for me, right, Reiki? This is for me healing. It just it's not I'm not special. I'm. Uh, I'm other people like I'm not special, but I'm just lucky that I found Sophie who came in on my on my path, and she delivered this message for me, and she 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 opened this door for me, and I'm so grateful. And also other people that came and gave me part of their medicine uh, and teach me, and I invested so much of my time also my time and my energy. People don't don't see it this also. <laughs> like or are not willing to to do it you know right 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 because it does take energy it takes you know if if you don't go the obvious mainstream way then what do you do i mean but it's so true because you have youtube you have all these things all these resources today where we can reach out when this first happened to me there was no internet yeah so i didn't know what to think because I was like wait I was like completely normal and happy and healthy and ex- and thriving before this happened so like What's what happened? why are you saying that I'm incapable now for the rest of my life because you gave me a label and you know how I'm gonna you know what the rest of my life is so sad. it's so arrogant mm-hmm. and I love science mm-hmm. and that's why mm-hmm. I want to always point to 
I want to point out to people that I am, I embrace many different types of therapies yeah. and Mary because they have scientific basis, you know, but this just leaning on this idea that they can fix our biological chemistry by yeah. in, you know, giving us a bunch of pills <laughs> and then we're supposed to live happy and healthy. Like that's not healthy. If you're depending on this kind of thing for, because one of the things that they say about people like me who are labeled bipolar or schizophrenic or whatever, bipolars experience a lot of the times voices, they experience um, yeah. different altered states. Um, yeah, yeah. And then people call those things psychosis who are in the medical field. But that's where I think, and we discuss this, the shamanism comes in because yeah. in shamanistic cultures, they don't see it as psychosis. They see it as a gift. If you are given these intuitions and visions, these are gifts you are then celebrated and then you're put into training so that you can help others, you know, through that, through that land of, uh, you know, ethereal energy and spirit. So this is, it seems as though that you experienced something similar. You were having these kinds of visions. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what um, how to describe it now uh, mm -hmm. yet, but uh, this like when, when you say psychotic uh, experience, uh, it can relate to this also. Yeah, I mean because it comes like it's it comes with a fear, but, but also in the other part of it, it's like wow, it's like also a spiritual experience that comes right. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there is there is the suffering, but there is also like an open door you're like um great experience and great learning and great teaching that happens and i also more creative and yes. i draw yes. and and I, I just do so many things you know mm -hmm. like <laughs> and and it feels it is great you know like i also love this part of me yes. i don't want to shut down you know yes. i don't want to hide it i don't want to kill it with kill my creativity even if I have a wild imagination, you know, for you guys to understand, right. <laughs> you know, like I'm different. I'm just different. Why you don't want to label right. me? This is what I don't understand. Well, it's so nice to hear somebody from another <laughs> part of the world say the exact same thing as me. And that's why yeah. it's like, obviously, there's a universality in what we are trying to say and to tell people. And, you know, it really is about empowering people. Not taking mm -hmm. that power away from people, putting it back into their hands and saying, hey, you can figure it out if you research what you think would heal you. Yeah, yeah. Follow follow your own uh, and, uh, voice, you know. You, you listen to yourself because at a certain point I, 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 in my life, now I think, okay, I can always ask for advice. I can always look for expertise, you know, look here or give my at the attention to someone who knows more than me or better than me but i take my own decision i i, I put whatever i want in my body you know don't right. tell me uh, you don't tell me what i i i do for my body you know i'm aware and i'm so lucky that i i live now we have internet we have all the resources we have book we have seminars we have uh, workshops we have retreats we have right. everything what you need to explore yourself and you can always go to the medical uh, right uh, what we call it um, the system you know right. but explore right. also listen i listen to myself and i and i ask guidance always i ask my guides i ask uh, the universe i ask god you know always help me you know I, and I believe in this. Yes. And one of the things that, you know, I don't always bring it up, but I am going to start bringing it up more because, um, you know, I think one of the realities that people don't want to really point to is that the philosophy of psycho psychiatry, they psychiatry. don't believe in, I'm going to say it, they don't believe in spirituality. They don't believe in God because one of the things that are continually put into my records every time I'm on the inside is that I mention something about God and that they always freak out over it. The last time I mentioned that I don't believe in psychiatry, I only believe in my God. 
I mean, I guess maybe they got nervous because I said, my God, instead of God, I don't know. But they said that they were so concerned that they called child, they called child protective service. I said, what? Protection services. I said, are you kidding me? You worried because I'm saying that, that I'm going to hurt my child? Like, this is something that I continually dealt with on the other side of very strict psychiatrists office who will say in hospitals, they have a almost like a vow that they take that. I mean, that's I'm saying that metaphorically, but it's almost like this understanding that if somebody starts talk, talking too much about spirituality, get them back on the path of figuring out uh. what's wrong with your biology. And that's a problem because, in fact, there is a DSM label for a spiritual emergency. They call it a, it's a disorder. So if you're having a crisis, a spiritual crisis, they basically just say, well, you know, these are the things that pop up in this crisis. You're speaking about God. You're speaking, you know, you're, you're hallucinating, you're hearing voices, all these things. So what they essentially do is destroy the concept and the experience of a mystic. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Yeah. So when I'm on the inside, I'm having my mystical experience. I look like a, exactly. a nut job. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like it, it, it's like, oh my God, I'm entering this world and I want to share this with people. But, you know, I have to break through the barriers, you know, of, of what they believe is real, not real. This is like the overall problem because they don't believe in these things as real therapies, just even prayer. Yeah. They don't even believe that that's useful. I don't know. I'm, I, I, um, I mean, I stopped sharing everything with everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and also I believe what I share will, uh, res will resonate or, or some people will resonate with my word, with my, with my, um, my energy. So with my speech, so I don't share everything with yeah. like with everyone. Right. So this is right. like, for me, I don't know what, uh, how it is in the psychiatrist, um, really because i know only about my experience you know right and and for now i had just one bad experience in tunisia this happened and i was aware about it and the second experience which is uh good you know yeah uh, and so i don't know really because i believe that those people studied uh, also in in tunisia they come from um religious families or like it's not it's not um per se we are we we are a religious country right but very modern so we have also the right to believe on whatever we oh, want that's nice like, yeah because there's a balance there in america medicine is largely secular they yeah. only believe like it's very common for most scientists in america to push forward that there is nothing beyond there the consciousness is only matter this is the overriding understanding or their understanding they don't believe in energy they don't believe in those things i believe in everything I think. it is real because it's real what happens to us when we die there's energy there's energy that something happens so for us to say okay well nothing is real yeah what about near death near death experiences there's a lot happening. That's what I experienced when I came back from India. So my feeling is that th as soon as I told them that, I thought that if I opened up about that, they'd be like, oh, yeah, there's a lot of people that, yeah. that claim that maybe that happened. No, that was it. I said something like that and I was branded for the rest of my life. So they don't believe in those things. It's so mm -hmm. sad. And again, when I say they, I say American psychiatry, because I know psychiatry is the overall arching medical approach to treating a mental illness, as they say. But, you know, there are good psychiatrists. There are good people. For sure. For sure. Um, because that's why they get into it. They want to help people. Yeah, yeah. And also, I'm very aware of generalization now. Yes. Uh, this is also something that I learned in my coaching Um experiences in Netherlands so I'm, I'm very careful on the words I use and I try to not use them and like um because I, I really don't know America is big I'm sure there's psychiatrists that are 
uh, that believes uh, in, in different things, you know? Right. And it is only my experience. But exactly. exactly. I have so much experience. Yeah, I told you about this guy that I met in the park <laughs> 17 so. years old already on education. Yeah. Yeah. And I was a teacher in the system. So I saw what they were encouraging us to do to the kids. And we were told that if we don't take care of a situation like that, that it's negligence on the part of the teacher. If we don't tell the parents that, you know what, you should go to the doctor, get a diagnosis. We think this is what it is. It's ADD. It's ADHD. You know, my son, too, he was uh, he, somebody told me, oh, why don't you get a diagnosis for him? And then he could get reading help. I'm like, yeah, OK. I can understand, okay, the uh, diagnosis, for example, ADHD, okay? But who says that to treat, to heal this, we need the medication? Who said so? Right. Maybe there are so, so, there are something else. There are so other practices that someone who has uh, a disorder, let's say, mm-hmm can be a gut disorder it can be you know biological disorder that affects also uh, the mind you know right. affects also the, the mental well-being right okay there are many things that can happen in the body that affect or alter um the the mental well-being so right. like who says for sure or who say that education are the best i know option And if you look at the history of medication development, it's terrible. I mean, it started in wartime and it just, it was used very abusively early on. So they kept tweaking it to make it so that the side effects weren't bad, but with the same intention, which was to control a person's behavior, a person's thoughts, a person's feelings. So they kept tweaking it. All I know is in 1994, when I was first given it, I was made in, I was an actress on off Broadway in the, in New York city. I then went to India, came back, was put on meds and I couldn't even talk. I couldn't read. This is what they did to me. So it, for my own good, for my own good, they said, so I'm just like, when I saw so much abuse over the years and with the same story and the same narrative, now the medicines are a little, or the medications are a little bit more tolerable. So people who can tolerate them, they say, oh, well, you know, I'm feeling better, whatever. But many people are walking around slightly, at least in America, slightly tranquilized. <laughs> we start with this and it's a very long topic. We can talk about it for we can hours. We talk about this forever. Know? Yeah. But the, the idea is why, how I discovered you. So let, let's get back to this. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your your blog post, your your blog. It was, I was obviously interested in in shamanism and bipolarity. So, and uh, and also because I was filming a friend of mine who is very who is an artist as well, uh, and he's also here. We did the reggae t- t- together, and he's into right. shamanism also, and plant medicine. And I was uh, filming him, and he talked. He said about. People who are uh, the, uh, labeled bipolar in the shaman community, like, of course, they don't have this label, but this right. disorder, you mean, they recognize it. Uh, they are considered as gifted and they have a special training, like you said, because they are so sensitive that right. they can feel other things and have, like we said, visions or um, another interpretation of the world, that's it, or the reality, or they have another perce- perception. And right. I believe it's related to sensitivity, you know, like very sensitive to other, they can be very sensitive to other people's emotions. Right. Like I, I know myself that I'm very sensitive to other people's emotions and I can very easily be drained like this, you know, also right. I'm in an environment where I don't feel safe or I don't feel okay. I'm not happy. Like I told you, my traumas are activated. Right. And and this is why I see, I feel like it's a really great conversation now to have and to raise because people should ask themselves, like we said, okay, so I feel unwell. Let me listen to my body. Let me just stop and rest. And what we 
say, I think Jim Carrey says this. I love Jim Carrey. I know, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love some, uh, like, some ideas that we have, but when he says, like, depression is depressed. I think some other people share this concept as well, you know, like when you are dealing with depression or when you are feeling this depression, it means just stop and rest. Right. Rest, just sleep, eat well, stop worrying, stop this negative things that is happening, just rest. And for some people, and very sadly now, what we we are so stressed all the time you know we have know. we are so much into action 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 we can we don't know how to stop exactly. i need to remind myself to breathe you know when we were talking right. about breathing oh yeah tell us you know everything you say is just so fulfilling <laughs> to me so because much. i just so believe much. you're basically using language that like it's exciting my whole body because I'm like, yeah, what's that? you know, <laughs> no, it's true because a lot of people can't articulate like you. And I'm just so happy to have you on. Tell us a little bit about what you know about the breath work. Oh, wow. So the breath work for me, um, I, I did my first, I had my first session. Actually, I did so many breathing techniques before, right? I am very aware about it, but I had the first session of conscious connected breath. It was last year when I was in Thailand on Zoom with um, Indri, a Balinese woman mm -hmm. uh, that I appreciate a lot. Uh, and I discovered a new dimension. <laughs> nice. When I did this practice and the way she was guiding us through the breath and just to be conscious, okay, to the breath that we, I can just stop and breathe. Beautiful. And we, like, we should do it often, you know, just to remind the, someone in front of us, just <sighs> let's breathe. So it was for me, uh, how I get uh, connected to my body again. This is the way, it's my anchor, like the way mm. I, con I connect with myself. But also uh, the breath, the, this breathing technique and other breathing techniques, also the Sufi breath that I love. Uh, it's like, and it activates, you know, like it's a alert. I heard <laughs> I, about I, things like that. I didn't know if it, that's a particular one from the Sufi tradition. Uh, I, I don't know, but I found it in this book, uh, uh, which is called Just Brief by Dan Brulé. It's a really amazing book. So if people are interested, interested in breath work, they can start with this book, read it. But I also highly recommend to go to Alchemy of Breath, where I got my training and I'm still with them. I love wow. it so much. That's so uh, great. Yeah, yeah. And it, 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 oh, it healed me. It just healed, it healed me. With other things that I did, of course. But this is very big for you, the breath work. This is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm really, especially in this training, you know, with most people, we, we connect through Zoom, right? Uh, like this. Yeah. And share beautiful experiences together and beautiful training and everything is welcomed. My expression is welcomed. I'm really seen, you know, like they understand me, they feel me. And so it, it's just, it's also about the community. It's also about the support because when I believe when, when we are unwell, like I said, or we are facing depression or any phase, you know, very hard phase or dark night of the soul, we should seek for support yes. for love, for love, not for, for someone to tell you, oh, you should do this, 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 or why you don't do this, or you are sick, or you are crazy, or you are, I don't know, <laughs> you know, no, we're just looking, we are hurt, maybe our, my, my soul is tired, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> let's explore, let's read some interesting books, let's talk, you know, not just give me medication and make me become stupid. Oh my God, I, I hear you, I hear you. <laughs> I mean, clearly the Western mental health system is lacking. And I think why I personally think it's because we don't incorporate all of these other things. And not only that, what hurts me is that much of the westernized approach and you hear it when they say things like, you have to seek immediate treatment. You have to make sure you receive treatment and get the right treatment. And I'm like, Okay, so you're saying the right treatment is only medication and psychiatry. We know that many, many people have light 
distress, mental distress, basic distress, you know, whether it be yeah, anxiety yeah, yeah. and I'm not, I'm definitely not belittling it because I mean, you know, I deal with these things often. Mm-hmm. It's just that I try to approach it in a different, with a different mindset, with the feeling that, oh, I can rise above this. I can redirect my thoughts, my emotions, my energy, and I can experience something new based on those choices. I have actual conscious decision-making towards bettering my future and bettering my life. Mm -hmm. That, if it was taught, you would see how fast all of these people would choose different modalities because they'd be like, well, yeah, they'd be called to things that would be self-improvement rather than self like putting yourself down. So what other things do you think that could potentially improve the system as it is today? Um, Like I said, also, I don't really like uh, giving advices because I, I, what my experience is mine, you know, I'm talking only about myself. And also I don't know, you know, like, but what I know and I feel it very strongly and for sure, you know, be open to receive guidance. If you yeah. ask for guidance, you will receive the right guidance. If you believe that you can heal yourself, you can heal yourself. <laughs> and, and and there are so many also, especially here in the United States, especially here, there are so much guidance and so many books and so many shows and so so many help and support that you can find, you know, if you're religious or if you're not, right. you know, like there is always support and maybe you can find also support in some hospital. I don't know, but mm-hmm. be aware, be aware of your own well-being and, and, and your capacity to heal yourself right. first before jumping into conclusions and jumping into uh, taking medication and, and just believe yourself that you're sick, you know, like, believe yourself that you are healed <laughs> there is a lot i use for example for my own healing i do this every morning when i wake up i try at least so i do the the, the breathing my breathing technique and i also uh, do some reiki on myself and i say affirmations beautiful what a daily practice yes yes and i feel good about myself and i do this and also you know we see this a lot on instagram and self-care and self-love and it's so easy to say but when you're when you're in the darkness <laughs> you yeah. don't do this right but it's i think this is the time when one should do really self-care and self-love right. the most you know so um I, I i i try to be more compassionate to myself and to treat myself like really to treat myself to give gifts to myself to buy nice things to myself and just mm-hmm. to celebrate myself you know especially when i don't when i don't feel good right you know not to jump already oh, i'm crazy i am i'm right. sick I'm, but even in tunisia you know people go very quickly into conclusions you know they put so much barriers and also playing so many roles you know like we all play roles so I believe like me being here in the United States is a bl- blessing. It's really a gift. And I celebrate it every day when I wake up uh, because I, it's so beautiful and I feel so safe and I feel so welcomed. I feel like home really because. Oh my God. That's so nice. Yeah. Because I, I can talk about those things and I'm welcomed and I'm so happy to go out to see your art, you know, like. Oh my God. I was thrilled. I was on like cloud nine the rest of the weekend. It was so good. I had a fan from across the world. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. It's wonderful. And you're nothing but an inspiration. Oh, thank you so much. It's true. One last thing I do want to ask you about, you know, we talk about, we've been talking about the medication perspective, but, you know, I'm looking into this more. And I know that you are too. Um, mm-hmm. There is a, I guess, sacred approach to medicine through plant medicine. Mm-hmm. And I know that you were also interested interested in psilocybin and how psychedelics work with healing. Have you? And you said you had a few experiences with it. How were those experiences? Oh. Um... Like I experienced, I think, like uh, many other uh, people um, in as a recreational 
uh, drug for, for a first mushroom. You know, like when you, you go to Amsterdam, you know, everyone you <laughs> try mushroom in right. the park, you know, to see how it feels. Yeah. <laughs> and it was already beautiful, you know, when you when I did it, I did it with uh, my friends and close people to my heart. So it was a really nice experience. So I get got the feeling that this is something that is healing you know if you know how to use it for, uh, for sure you don't use it in a small right. room uh, with uh, bad people uh, people that you don't vibrate you know like right you, you don't feel safe you know you don't use any drug when you don't feel safe that's for right. sure you know and i'm not recommending people to try this if they don't feel the calling they don't feel right yes. about it or they have second thoughts or something don't just don't do it if you know right. yourself, you will be scared. Don't, just don't do it. You right. need, you're just not ready for this. Uh, and the second time, it was more um, as a holistic approach. Uh, uh, and it was with beautiful beings that I love so much. And it was in nature. So it, I felt really sacred. And also we introduced like sh shamanic uh, songs. And we had beautiful. many musical in instruments. We were only for... Uh, people that we we had a, bond, a very a nice bond and uh, we healed each other and we did uh, like guidance for each other we we had cards readings oh and everything oh my goodness you should you should host these things <laughs> like like, uh, like nicole kidman <laughs> you know the show i told you about nicole kidman <laughs> when you show on hulu nine strangers or nine perfect strangers okay and nicole kidman yes She's doing this, you know. No, I, I don't I intend to do this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious about it. I love to read about it. I love yeah. to hear podcasts about it. But yeah, I don't have enough experience in plant medicine to talk about it. But I always have some oils with me, you know, that I use for like essential oils, lavender. I use to feel more calm. Mm. I try to use as much... Uh, healthy things uh, possible for my skin for my well-being for what i drink I, like it's just taking care of self you know right. of course plants like there are so many some people like my friend i was telling you about he knows so much about plant medicine mm. psychedelics or not or just you know for the um, everyday use right so so that i would love to learn more about it I, yeah i'm thinking also if uh, i can find study here in the united states maybe i can be interested in studying more about plant medicines you know, right like, and their uh, use in the well-being and especially in the mental well-being and in the holistic approach of of uh, of healing well, yeah. one interesting area that psychiatry is pursuing is psychedelic research. So, and it, it is interesting to me because I've heard criticisms on both sides. Yeah. People who are, you know, anti big pharma, they say, well, this is going to be the same thing. And I can see that oh, yeah. as well. But yeah, the yeah. one thing that they are finding in the research is that you don't need it continually. You mm -hmm. might just do it once a year. Exactly. Which is interesting because that's how they do it in traditional mm -hmm. shamanistic cultures. They do they'll do their peyote or their ayahuasca once a year. It's a tradition, it's sacred. So if you have a choice of, oh, okay, you go once a year to do this when you're feeling down, or you have to take something every single day up to hundreds of dollars a month, like this is clearly a way of the future. So let's look for this. Uh, and, and I'm not the only one. There are so many cases, like I, I believe, that are um, that wants to share about this, you know. And I'm not saying, like, this is something I I don't I really don't know. I because I didn't study it. I didn't put my focus on it. I I have some basic knowledge. Um, I have some inspirations, you know, but I don't know. So I, I will not say to people, yes, do this or try this. Right. <laughs> I really don't know. This is my own experience. But I believe that like this, you as a use in a very spiritual and very compassionate and safe space, it's healing. Yes. <laughs> It is healing for yes, me, yes. the way I, I, I experience it and the way I perceive it, it's healing. And if it's one uh, your whole, one in your life or one every year or, or every two years, this is something that I believe every soul want to experience because yeah, it's just yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So.
Cinda, thank you so much for coming oh. aboard and telling us your story because to me, everything it that is anecdotal, a personal experience, is the experience that I want people to hear. Oh. Because my experience, I'll go on and on. I certainly am no um expert, but I feel that if everybody shared their stories, we would have a lot more, we would see we have a lot more in common and that there are several areas that we could we could take as alternatives. Exactly. And what a beautiful platform you have. It's Aww. really beautiful. And I love the name of it. Not as crazy <laughs> as you think, okay? <laughs> Not as crazy that. as people should. <laughs> Well, we're both thinking that. That's what's so good. Hey, no, I want to say this. Like the way I wake up, I think at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. And I was, because I had this, you know, all this knowledge. And I say, oh, let me write just bipolarity and shamanism because my friend told me about it. just those two words and UK. I can't believe. And I went to your website and I think I, I read first and then I took screenshots and then I, oh, I heard my. the podcast. And I was, oh my God, yes, she's describing exactly what i have been through you know i just love that that makes me feel so good bipolar shaman people look up bipolar shaman my website's going to come up www.jengatasiciliano.com oh yes i love it too <laughs> listen i'd love to have you back another time like let's do this again yeah because yeah. you really have a lot to add, add and offer oh, thank you so much. this kind of conversation so well, Thank you once again for coming. I will see you very soon. Thanks for listening to Not As Crazy As You Think. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember, mental health is attainable for anyone, especially those labeled with mental illness. Until next time, peace out.